Mr. Garcia, for the purpose of the meeting, it's 404 at 405. If we could go ahead and get started. Um, I do have someone reaching out to Mr. King. Um, okay. But for the purpose of our live streaming, we would probably need to go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I was looking at, I was trying to read my clock at the same time. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope um, I was going to say this message or the Zoom meeting finds you all well today. And, um, are we recording? Are we ready to record? Yes. Okay. Well, welcome, uh, fellow board members, and of course, representatives from Wista and from the city of Winston to our uh, Thursday, July 30th uh, board meeting. I would like to uh, just a couple of quick notes just to let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded because it is a virtual meeting, um, much like the audio recordings that we do, but also, um, so the entire meeting is being recorded. And for that purpose, uh, first we're gonna do a roll call of the board members. And I ask that board members also, when you make a motion or second a motion or vote on a motion that you please state your name for the record and for the recording. I would appreciate that. So at this time, we'll go through the roll call and I'll start. Robert Garcia, uh, board chair. Jack Flair, member. Willie Clark, member. Matt Lawson Jackson, member. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And I know that we're trying to reach out to Mr. King and hopefully he'll be joining us shortly. Um, now, let's see. Next, and, ho and on your agenda, by the way, you did receive a revised agenda and you received a, another resolution. Did everybody uh, get that? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Great, great, great. It's a very important one. So we're glad that everybody got that and thank you uh, for that. Uh, so, which takes us now into our safety message. And if I may, Ms. Woodson. Yes, sir. Okay. In mine, I got to think about it. I always, and I love the fact that Ms. Woodson has started this when she first came on board with the safety message, but I guess this is more so just in general with this pandemic that we're going through. I'd like to just remind everybody that in everything that I read in my world, um, there's a lot going on that comes along with this pandemic within families and children and adults, and you name it, all ages. Let everybody know that there's no shame in saying that there's some issues going on. So for the safety of one's, uh, maybe of their mental state, their physical state, their health state, that you do reach out to these agencies. There's a lot of agencies out there that are willing to help that have got uh, phone lines open that have uh, seminars and workshops that are available for people that are dealing with things, um, be, be it whatever, um, that are tied into this pandemic with people having to remain at home and almost, in, well, they are confined to a certain degree. So please take care of yourself. It's very, it's a safety message. So um, I would encourage you also, that's my safety message for today. Thank you. Um, let's see, uh, public comment, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Woodson, but I do not believe we have anybody joining from the general public. We did not get anyone to call in for the conference call information, but we can have a 30 seconds, um, silence to see if anyone joined, um, after the last, um, check. Okay. We'll take, um, we'll take just a, uh, a half a minute here to wait to see if anybody joins us for public comment. Okay, and at this time, nobody has joined us, so we will move on to our action items. Uh, the first one, of course, as always, is the approval of the previous meeting minutes, which was June 18th. Uh, for those of you that have received it and were able to read over it, or if you, and we're going to give it just a few more minutes, if there's any um, corrections, changes, uh, errors that you saw, um, 
please note them, but I'll give it just a couple of minutes for you to review them again. When appropriate, I move their approval. Thank you, Willie Dr. Ferdinand. Thank you, Dr. Flair. And we have a second by Willie Clark. By Mr. Clark. Thank you so very much. Um, we have a motion and a second for the approval of the June 18th board minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. Robert. Aye. aye, Jack Fleer. Aye, Willie Clark. Aye, Jeanette Lawson Jackson. Thank aye. you, everyone. That was Mr. Mr. King. King. He, uh, he also said aye. He's joined us. Oh, Mr. King is with us. Yes. Fantastic. Mr. King, hello, if you can hear me. Thank you for joining us. I can hear you. Thank you, sir. All right, great. Next, we have a resolution <coughs> authorizing a contract. Oh, here we go. A resolution. Uh, can everybody see the screen that Ms. Woodson is putting up? Yes. 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 Okay. Resolution authorizing contracts with Forsyth County for the provisions of Medicaid transportation services pass sales. Ms. Woodson? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Garcia. This resolution is the resolution that mimics the one we have uh, asked the board to approve in previous years. Annually, the Forsyth uh, Department of Social Services asked that we contract with them for the purpose of providing transportation services to their Medicaid recipients, as well as the bus pass sales that they provide to their Medicaid recipients. Um, this is an annual contract agreement that I would, on behalf of the board, if the board so approves, sign on behalf of WISTA and the city of Winston-Salem. And I will advise that the, all the documents have been provided to the assistant city man, attorney, and they've been uh, proofread and authorized for signature upon the board's approval. Okay. Yes, we do receive this every year. Um, any uh, fellow board members, any questions? I move its approval. I second Keith King. Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Fleer to approve the resolution and we had a second by Mr. King. Uh, at this time, if we could have a vote, uh, um, please signify by saying aye on the resolution authorizing contracts with Forsyth County for the provision of Medicaid transportation and for bus pass sales. All of those signify by saying aye. Aye, Robert Garcia. Aye, Jack Fleer. Aye, Willie Clark. Aye, Keith King. Aye, Jeanette Lawson Jackson. Thank you, everyone. Okay. The motion has been passed. Now we move on to the next, or the resolution, I should say. The next resolution. This was the one that was added on the resolution authorizing the city manager purchasing department to sign a purchase order with new flyer for eight 35 foot low floor buses from uh, from the 2015 bus purchase contract agreement. Uh, Ms. Woodson. Yes, sir. Um, to the fellow board members, this resolution, and again, I apologize for um, it's late submittal. Uh, we were going back and forth with some language. Um, for this resolution. However, um, in 2015, the board was made aware and adopted, um, a, approved the city manager to sign a purchase order on an existing contract with New Flyer of America for uh, hybrid new buses, the 35 foot low floor buses. Um, we, this contract is under agreement or the terms of this contract ends November of 2020. Uh, WISTA is at the point where we have eight buses that are to, due to be retired um, for soon for the uh, mileage, useful life. And what we would like to do is to utilize the funds of the CARES Act um, for COVID and to replace those buses at 100% um, match from the Federal Transit Authority. Um, by doing so, we've come to the board today to get approval again to um, have the city manager to do a purchasing order for the total of the eight buses um, effective through November of 2020's contract. I'll entertain any questions if there be any. Those buses are total there. Each, each, each 
individual bus is 793,624. We are um, in need of eight buses. With this contract, we would have the ability to have 32 additional buses added to this um, current contract. So therefore, we're bringing this to you today to get permission for the authorization for the city manager to sign this purchase order. Okay. And Ms. Woodson, is this, I noticed that it's New Flyer America Incorporated. Is that a new bid or was that the same ones that provided our buses previously? This the, is the same contract, the this, same vendor that provided the last buses okay. that were purchased in 2015. Okay, it just didn't strike an accord with me and I thought it might be a new vendor. Okay. No, sir, it's the same one. I move its approval. Second, okay. Keith King. Okay. If there are no further questions, Dr. Fleer has made a motion uh, to approve the resolution authorizing the city manager and uh, slash purchasing department to sign a purchase order with New Flyer for eight 35 foot lower floor buses from the 2015 bus purchase contract agreement. And Dr. King seconded. All those please signify by saying aye. Aye, Robert Garcia. Aye, Jack Fleer. Aye, Willie Clark. Aye, Jeanette Lawson Jackson. Aye, uh, Keith King. Thank you, everyone. The resolution has been passed. And thank you, uh, fellow board members, on that. Uh, the one that was added by Ms. Woodson, as we all know, that that very much exceeds our approval limit. But nonetheless, they are, out of respect to the board, are, are uh, notifying us of this purchase coming up. So thank you, Ms. Woodson, for that. And we'll all look forward to uh, always adding uh, the new uh, buses to our fleet. That's very exciting. Next up is an update on new board members. Ms. Woodson? Yes, sir. This is just a brief announcement on the new members. As I stated in last month's meeting, uh, the Mayor's Council had made me aware so that I can make the board aware that they had received um, recipients of candidates that were interested in becoming with the board uh, of directors members. And I wanted to make you all aware that this Monday, August the 3rd, that will be going to the city council. So that will take place in August. Uh, so we will have three additional board members to be a part of this uh, board of directors within the month of August. And I wanted to make sure I put that on the agenda so that I wouldn't forget to give you that information. Okay. And once that has happened, um, I will be able to provide an update with that would include a bio for each one of the um, potential candidates. And then we will have a meeting separately to welcome them to, them to the board. Fantastic. Good Fantastic. news. Well, we're very, very anxious. I know this has been long coming. The pandemic kind of put a, uh, a delay in that process. Yes, sir. So it's great to know, and and hopefully we can we will have that time to meet with them, uh, and and chat with them prior to. So thank you very much on that. Thank you. Questions from the board on those? Okay. If there's no if there's no questions, so we have two great reports coming up, um, and it's gonna they're somewhat lengthy report, but I think they're very very important. You'll find them a lot of information for it. the first one coming. Uh, regarding the fiscal year operation. Um, Ms. Carroll, I believe you're going to do a slideshow. Mm -hmm. Yes, I sure am. All righty. All right. Uh, let me just need me to share my screen. Yes. Okay, let me get it set up here. Uh, it says host is disabled participating sharing. Hold on one second.
I'll share yeah. mine, Carol. Okay, can you put it into? There we go. Can you put it into uh, uh, presentation mode? Up here. And the top uh, bar. Yeah, I'm up here. Hold on one second. Isn't it under slideshow? Would that be the? Yeah, it's under slideshow, but there's also a little icon up top there. Uh, from the beginning. All the, no, all the way to the left from the beginning. No. Yeah, right there. All right. There you go. Okay, thank you, Donna. All right, well, um, I guess I'll just say next, Donna when I'm ready. Um, this, of course, was not a normal year uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, looking at the data, it was uh, kind of a challenge because everything was down, of course, you know, because of what happened with the coronavirus. We Saturday service, we've had to run that the last three months, six days a week. And the mitigation routes, of course, ended early because of the coronavirus. So just to kind of give you a precursor before I get into uh, showing the data, at the end of February, fixed route was up 1%, ridership that is. Trans-aid ridership was up 8%. Next slide, please. So where we ended up for the overall fiscal year was for fixed route, we were down 10%. And for trans-aid, we were down 11%. And when I first saw this, I was kind of surprised that it wasn't more. But then I thought, well, it was only um, you know three months, and we're talking larger numbers, so you know it, it kind of mitigated the uh, the impact. Because I know other agencies have lost tremendous ridership, so I think this is really a good sign of how resilient our ridership has been to overall only be down ten and eleven percent. That's a really good sign. Um, next slide, please. All right, so looking at, uh, this is kind of the busy slide, but looking at the routes, you know, again, everything was gonna be down. So I was trying to come up with a creative way to show the impact on the routes. And I thought, well, let's look at the impact of the coronavirus on these routes. Because if I would have just shown the last fiscal year to the you know pre most current fiscal year, everything's down. So I decided to look at it by weekday, Saturday, and Sunday and look at the impact of the coronavirus on each route to see what routes did really well and which routes not so well. So uh, first looking at the weekday routes, you can see that the top you know five ones, the five routes at the top there were the ones that were least impacted. Uh, 107, 103, 83, 101, and 85. And four out of those five are all uh, mall routes, Walmart routes, you know, going to shopping. So it's understandable that those routes would be least impacted by um, the coronavirus. But also the other thing that those, especially those top two have in common is their hospital routes. Uh, weekday folks going to work, um, they go right by the, you know, our two hospital complexes. So I think that plays a big part in why those two routes, you know, did not lose as much as other routes did. As you continue to look down that list, you can see it's kind of a stair step all the way down to the bottom of Route 84, uh, which lost over 50% of its ridership. So not so much of a resilient route. Uh, next slide, please. So looking at Saturday, we see a little bit of a different story. We see some south-southeast routes jump to the top. Uh, route 108, which is circular, and 101, which is a crosstown route, were the ones that were least impacted by COVID, which kind of surprised me. Uh, but again, those are attached to Walmart down there on the south side. And you look at those next couple of uh, routes right below that red line, um, Haynes, Mill Road, that's a Walmart route, 
you know, of course, 83's Walmart. Again, shopping routes. Um, those two routes that we saw at the top on the previous slide, slide down the list. I mean, 107 is all the way down towards the bottom. It lost 43% on the weekend. Um, and 103 is kind of in the middle of the road there. It lost 32%. So kind of tells you those are more work routes versus, you know, folks are using these routes on the weekends for more shopping. Um, next slide, please. And then Sunday routes, there was one route that was kind of the cream of the crowd, crop, and that was Route 101, Peters Creek, the crosstown. Um, it lost only 11% as opposed to the rest, which, you know, lost 20 plus. And uh, on Sunday, Route 80, going to Haynes Ma via Hawthorne Road, lost the most at over 50%. So just kind of a different way of looking at it to see what routes were more resilient to the coronavirus versus not. Uh, next slide, please. Now changing and kind of looking at a big picture again. The percentage of ridership by region hasn't changed much uh, from last year, still pretty much the same percentages. And this is not by wards. This is just me kind of cutting a pie, so to speak, of the regions, drawing a line in the sand and uh, just seeing how much ridership is in each region. So the Northwest region is, uh, has the highest followed by the West with Haynes, Haynes Mall area, the Southeast and on down with the East having the least. Next slide. Moving on to how wheelchairs passengers were impacted between the two years. You can see that on fixed route, not as much. Uh, we still had a, a good bit of wheelchair passengers, only down about 5% there. And over on the Transaid side, of course, you would expect a bigger impact, almost 17% there, 17% uh, less passengers, uh, wheelchair passengers using the service from uh, fiscal 1819 to 1920. Next slide, please. Looking at bicycle riders uh, on fixed route, down about 11% between the two fiscal years. Uh, next slide, please. On time performance. Uh, for fixed route, we are down 11% and only down about 4.5% for Trans A. Now, we've been doing some tweaks and on, on time performance for both fixed route and Trans A, uh, making sure we're getting accurate numbers here. And I think you're going to see this you know, improve over the next year. Uh, we've kind of changed the methodology a, a little bit and how we're uh, collecting it and, you know, making sure we're getting the data as accurate as possible. Next slide. Revenue miles, uh, no big surprise here. Less of an impact on re uh, revenue miles for fixed route. Still a whole bunch of miles, but about 3% less than uh, the previous fiscal year, but still well over 2 million. And for TransAid, down a more significant amount, 15% uh, to around 1 million. Next slide, please. Well, one thing did go up, and that was cost per passenger. <laughs> you can always count on cost to go up, it seems. Uh, for fixed route, it went up 20%, and for TransAid, almost 30%. And uh, that, I, I mean, due to COVID and insurance and I mean, yeah, cost just kind of went crazy. Uh, we're more out of our control, I'll say that this year uh, with COVID than previous years. Uh, next slide, please. All right, some good news to report on accidents and injuries. Uh, between the two fiscal years, you can see we've had significant drops in fixed route trans aid and maintenance uh, across the fiscal years. We had a 100% drop and over 100% drop in accidents and fixed route overall, and the majority of it probably coming from uh, non-preventable accidents. But still, that's, that's wonderful. And in trans aid, a 25% drop. And then with maintenance, they didn't have many to begin with, but they still had a 50% drop. 
So we were very excited to see these numbers and, you know, and look forward to what the next year brings and hopefully they will continue to go down. Uh, next slide. Telephone performance. Uh, good news here too. Uh, the hold times have been going down. Um, went down 36% from over a minute to just under a minute. And we're very excited about that. We're getting, you know, tweaking our, uh, uh, tweaking the system to get it work better. And the next slide will, uh, if you could go on, Donna, we'll give you some more stats. Um, incoming calls were going, went down 23%, partially due to COVID, but we also know that incoming calls are going down but still COVID impacted that significantly. But the exciting part is the percent of answered calls went, uh, went up 6% to 96%, which is just wonderful. Um, the changes that the mobility management staff has been implementing have been working and uh, you can see it in the data. Now, I'm getting, before we go on to our next slide, I just wanna preface it that you, I just want you to look at the colors. There's going to be a top chart and a bottom chart. And think of it like a stoplight where red is bad, you know, yellow is caution, green is good. Go. So when you look at the contrast between these two charts, the top chart being uh, FY18 to 19, it's red, it's yellow, not much green going on there. But you can see in the bottom chart, that starting about October, you can, you can see the changes that were implemented and they're working. I mean, a whole lot of green there, <laughs> which is wonderful. We're meeting our goals and for, for the number of calls answered, which is, is really good and um, hats off to the mobility management folks. Uh, next slide. Moving on to maintenance, uh, the hours that maintenance worked, uh, mechanic inspection and maintenance hours all went down, but the mechanic hours went down uh, more significantly than the other ones. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Donna, but I believe that was due to uh, staffing shortages. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. The, there was a reduction in staff because of different variances of attendance uh, illnesses. However, they were still with the less uh, less mechanics, they were still able to perform all of the required inspections and maintenance needs. So hats off to maintenance as well. Mm -hmm. And next slide. And also another call, shout out to maintenance, their road calls went down significantly in the last couple of years, 45% between FY 1819 to 1920 for fixed route and then for trans aid 1%. So very good. And that's coming from major mechanical failures. So that's good news. And finally, we kind of forgot about the mitigation routes. You know, they kind of got uh, stopped so quickly in the middle of COVID. I don't think we ever, ever gave you a final summary of what happened. So we're going to give you one now. <laughs> um, so where we ended up, we had two routes that, that improved you know, significantly with the mitigation routes, the additional route, uh, the additional half hour service. And that's Route 80, which is a Haynes Mall route, and then Route 103, which is also a Haynes Mall route. Both of those went up pretty good. Uh, route 80, 38%, almost 39%, and Route 103, almost 11%. Uh, route 85 also went up 5%, you know, an increase, not as much. And then Route 95 in the middle uh, only went up 7%. And let's see, I can't see that other, uh, apologize the way my screen is, I can't see that last bar over there, but um, Route 10, uh, 107, I think went down if I remember correctly and also Route uh, 83 went down 2%. So I think where we had left it was we didn't see as much improvement as we had hoped with these routes, additional ridership. Um, but I'm sure we'll revisit that uh, in the future. And I think that's it. Questions? 
<clears throat> well, Carol, thank you very much um, for this information. I was trying to feverishly write down notes as I review this again with you. But when you said that we were down 10% at the very beginning, 10% down on fixed, 11% down on transit, mm -hmm. and then when you showed that next slide, and you showed all those percentages, they were so high, but this was an overall, so. Yes, the that was looking at individual routes. Like the first slide was weekday, the second one was Saturday, the third one was Sunday. Right. And that was looking at the percentages of difference between pre-COVID, which would be July through March. And then, you know, when COVID happened, from you know the last three months of the fiscal year, April, May, June. So it was right. like really, you know, how resilient were these routes during COVID? That and I guess in looking at those individual routes, I mean, I was looking at the percentages, 40, 30s, high 20s, that if you bundled them together and took an average and then factored them in for the for the the, the good part of the year, the pre-COVID, it really and to be only down 10. Mm -hmm must have meant our ridership was up prior to that. Yes, yes. Am I reading yeah. that correctly? Mm -hmm. And I think like in March, we were going to have a really good month when COVID hit because ridership was just booming in March and then COVID hit and, you know, the rest is history. So, okay. and, you know, and, it, and the fir that first slide I showed is looking at the comparison of the two fiscal years. So that's a different comparison from what I was comparing in those next slides. I got you. Because that was just looking at the most current fiscal year. And I want to kind of throw my next comment or question out. Um, with the fact that we're in the midst of this pandemic, we certainly hope we will come out um, who knows when, but has there been consideration or discussions around uh, routes being realigned eliminated, et cetera? And I'll put well, that before everyone. No, so we've, we've been, prior to COVID, we had some discussions. Um, so um, in an early part of one of our meetings, I believe last year, um, Tanika and I discussed the fact that we would be looking at our data collection over a period of time and just collecting data for a whole year and looking at the physical, uh, the previous physical year versus the uh, current physical year and using that data to make sure that we make some accurate assumptions of if we need to make changes to any existing routes, um, any additions, anything that we need to modify in any way or shape or form. Um, so we're still, we, of course, that, that has been put on pause as well due to COVID. So we will resurface um, those conversations to look at um, possible changes in the routes in the future. And I, I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying, and I'm looking at the ridership every day and keeping an eye. And if any of our um, uh, routes are dipping, or you know, we need to take a look at it. So. Right, and what would be and what would be in our best interest? Certainly, we don't want to deprive anyone, but at the same time, to take that hard monetary look at these things. You know, mm -hmm. i.e., Sunday, we all know the churches are closed right now, or most churches are from what mm -hmm. I understand. So that was built, that Sunday was built for that and also too for like hospital visits and of course for mm -hmm. shopping, but my, some hard considerations there. Uh, and I was just so shocked at that percentage at cost per passenger. Is this information that is available to the general public? Are you speaking in reference to the the data of the route the routes? Yeah, the the actual cost per per passenger. It was up twenty percent for fixed and thirty percent for. Yes, all of our data is collected, and we have um, that's reported to the city, so it's it's uh, available to the public as well. And then, of okay. course, our agenda it'll be um, publicized on our website, so that'll be available for anyone to uh, review as well on the WISTA okay. website. Cool. Because I think that would be so helpful because you know how we get questioned all the time in regards to costs, et cetera, et cetera. And my last thing, and please, fellow board members, forgive me. I don't mean to hog all the questions, but the on-time performance. When we talk about that, because we've been very good about our on-time performance, is that just from a staffing issue, from a... Um, 
the on-time performance um, as far as TransAid, of course, currently we're really doing well in uh, TransAid on-time performance because of the uh, reduction in our passenger trips due to COVID. So they're mm -hmm. hovering around 92, 94% right now. Fix route, um, it has come up, it's improved as well. And some of the reasons that we're seeing that is we previously had some issues with our next bus, which is our um, vehicle locator, automatic vehicle locator, and that uh, actually gives us our on-time performance. So um, Carol has been working with next bus, Mr. Crawford. So they've been working and tweaking things and making sure that that um, technology is up and running accurately. And it is not perfect, it's not 100% uh, fixed and complete yet. However, the changes that the vendor has made has been successful and we're able to pr um, provide more data and with some different um, parameters that we set to gauge our own time performance. So that has shown that uh, fixed route is actually doing well as far as the on time performance also. Okay, fantastic. Fellow board members, Dr. Uh, Fleer. This is Jack Fleer. I was just, uh, I was very pleased to see the figures on the somewhat more modest reduction in ridership than mm -hmm. I would have expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, uh, Donna, do we have any uh, larger number of cities to compare this to? But I read the New York Times every day and they had a really much more serious problem. Mm -hmm. But of course, they also had a much more serious <laughs> yes. uh, attack of the virus and they have period. we've been fortunate our numbers mm -hmm. are increasing because of the available mm -hmm. testing that's now um uh, available to people now to citizens however we are still fortunate here in uh Forsyth county the city of winston salem when you compare it to larger cities or other cities so um we're working on actually actually providing data in comparison to other like transit authorities so that we'll um in the future recent future uh, we'll be able to provide that data as well as a comparison in our in our presentations on a monthly basis. That sounds very hopeful and uh, what I gather from it is that we are really meeting a serious need <laughs> which mm -hmm. is good news yes. and that maybe with that kind of stability not necessarily stability but less reduction than I would have anticipated the future sounds pretty good. Yes, it does. It sounds very mm -hmm. promising. We're going to do mm -hmm. what we can to provide as much service to Winston-Salem citizens as possible. Well, thank you very much, Carol. Those are always very helpful presentations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now, there, there is one last thing I want to point out in the presentation um, that evidently no one saw. <laughs> <laughs> I talked, Carol and I had this conversation and, and she thought, she wondered if anyone would catch it. And I said, well, if no one catches it, then they are not qualified to be with the drivers because <laughs> the drivers have to expect the unexpected and they have to see what people don't normally see on the road. So if you didn't see the additional passenger on our fixed route bus on the presentation, then you won't meet that need. <laughs> So anybody That's see our little friend, a little squirrel that's traveling? Chipmunk. Us? Chipmunk. The chipmunk. I'm sorry. Yeah. From my backyard. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, that's good. We're serving a broad population. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of blurry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He got a free ride. He did. He, he did. got a free ride with Wista. So thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead. We have another presentation, um, and I know it's kind of lengthy, so we wanted to provide you all with an update um, of our annual marketing efforts. So we'll go to Tina at this time. And Tina, for whatever reason, I'm not able to share, uh, allow you to drive. So I will do okay. and just go to your um, presentation. Okay. Um, that's fine. Great. Okay. So I'm going to just tell you when I need to go to the next one. Is that okay? That's fine. All right. So uh, this presentation encompasses WISTA's marketing efforts from um, July 2019 to June 2020. I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Um, we'll share information about our website, which launched in July last year. Uh, list several of the partnerships we were fortunate to develop in 2019 
highlight a couple of sponsorships that involved RISCA, give you details on art projects created by uh, the city, county, public uh, art commission that WISTA passengers and the public need to know about. Uh, give quick updates on employee events and then mention some cancellations due to COVID-19 and discuss our marketing efforts uh, during the pandemic. So are you on the screen that says wstransit.com? Because I can't see it. I don't know. Okay, move forward, Donna. <laughs> Okay, can you move forward? Okay, now go up to, yeah, go up to, um, okay, now come on down to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so we had um, the desire to have, uh, I guess, fewer pages, and the ability to provide um, more pertinent information on the site. That was really important. Um, it was important because uh, people were having difficulty uh, trying to get the information. It was challenging for them to find uh, information when they visited our site, okay? So we opted to trim it down to make it more user-friendly. Next page. Next. Okay, um, so navigating the site with ease was our goal. We added the Google Trip Planner, gave visitors a way to reach out to us through our Contact Us page, and made it less stressful and costly uh, to, com uh, to complete the ADA applications. Uh, we use radio, print, and social media to get the word out uh, about the changes. Next. Okay, so. This is what the social media um, schedule looked like. We were very happy with the results that we got through the use of social media, specifically with geofencing, which is digitally sectioning off a geographic area and communicating with cell phones and other mobile devices within that space. A little over 900,000 impressions resulted from this campaign and we spent just over $3,500. Next. All right, so the total number of views to our website from January through December 2019 was over 355,000. The trip planner was a great addition to the site with over 8,500 visits to that particular page. Next. And so now we're only seven months into 2020 and we've already had around 310,000 site visitors. We have no doubt that we will have quite a few more by the end of this year. Next. We had over 90,000 unique visits to the site throughout 2019 and around 6.9 million hits to the site last year. Now a hit, is, it actually refers to the number of files downloaded on a site. So this could include uh, schedules, applications, photos, graphics, et cetera. And we have a little over 3 million hits thus far in 2020 and around 41,000 unique uh, visits. A unique visit is <clears throat> when someone directly types in wstransit.com. So as many times as that is done, it means that people are coming directly to us. Next. We use the site a lot more now to communicate news and alerts to visitors and passengers. We share information about holiday closures, inclement weather concerns, and basically any necessary changes that we want to share with the public. Next. Okay, so transportation has been identified as one of the barriers to success in economically challenged communities. Wista feels it is a privilege to share information about our services. So we sometimes attend events other agencies sponsor. We partner with organizations for the positive benefit their, event, their events may offer to the public. We sponsor events of our own or we serve as a sponsor for events as well. Next. So we participated as a vendor with United Health Center for their community day event, which 
offered health screenings, back to school giveaways, and other free on-site services to those who were in attendance. Uh, as with most of the events that we go to, WISTA promotes our fixed route and or our paratransit services. Next. On a quarterly basis, we serve as a presenting agency at the Building Integrated Communities Newcomers Workshops sponsored by the City of Winston-Salem's Human Relations Department. We also participated in the 2019 Statewide Symposium for agencies who work with community newcomers. Next. We partnered with Winston-Salem Forsyth County Community Appearance Commission, the Winston-Salem Vegetation Management Department, and Keep Winston-Salem Beautiful for their 27th Annual Roots Day event by providing shuttle service for around 300 volunteers who were planting trees at specific locations in the city. Next. We were a partner for the Innovation Quarter Transportation Fair for Wake, Wake Forest University employees, which was sponsored by the Piedmont Authority for Regional Transportation. The North Carolina Department of Transportation and the city of Winston-Salem also attended as partners to encourage people to use public transportation services to avoid traffic congestion. Next. WISTA hosted a community job fair at the Quiet Campbell Transportation Center late last year through a partnership with the Morningside Reynolds Park Road Association and the Josh Howard Foundation. Approximately 200 people had access to 15 employers, some whom were hiring on site. Next. WISTA also hosted a community resource fair sponsored by the city of Winston-Salem's Successful Outcomes After Release, which is the SOAR program, which serves uh, ex-offenders and their families. Next, we were happy to host free monthly health screenings conducted by the Physician's Assistance Program for the Wake Forest University School of Medicine and the United Health Center's College Ambassadors Program, encouraging healthcare advocacy and networking opportunities for college seniors from Winston-Salem State University and Salem College. Next. We occasionally serve as a sponsor along with other companies for events that are free to the public. As mentioned earlier during the presentation, all sponsorships must be approved by our general manager. Next. As the primary sponsor for the Accessible Festival, WISTA opens the door to, to the entire disability community and approximately 24 agencies that serve men, women, and children with disabilities and their families. Our 2019 event was very well attended uh, with around 900 people there. We incorporate the help of around 30 volunteers uh, along with our staff to pull off this totally free event. Next. Sometimes we participate on various committees in the community if we're asked. Uh, for instance, the City County Public uh, Art Commission <sighs> developed projects to improve the public transit riders' experience through artistic bus shelters and the restoration of the memory wall of peace and love, which is here at the Transportation Center. I represent WISTA on this committee, as does Mr. Philip Cohen, a member of the Transit Riders Advisory Committee. Next. After working to develop the requirements and a presentation on the project, our group, which was led by Mr. Kelly Bennett, a project planner for the city of Winston-Salem, put together the specifics of the bus shelter art project. In an effort to share the details and encourage participation in the project, we held a workshop at the transportation center to share details for competing for one of 12 grants. Next. After the workshop on March 4th, which about 75 people attended, 44 applications were submitted, and we whittled that down to 16 artists who competed for an opportunity to receive a $1,000 grant to cre uh, create an original design that will be on display in a Wista bus shelter for about 12 months. The next 12 uh, slides will show the submissions that were selected. I am going to share the name of the artist, a photo of their proposed design, and the shelter location that either they selected or 
was selected for them. Next, Leo Rucker, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on University Parkway near the Double Tree Hotel, uh, has experience here at WISTA. Some of his artwork is already on display here. Next, Mike Wilson, uh, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on University Parkway and Coliseum Drive uh, in front of the Goodwill store, has no professional artwork experience, but uh, his artwork was submitted and we all loved it. Next, Phoebe Pankey, uh, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on the corner of 25th and Cleveland Avenue, actually chose the shelter on this location. And she's featuring three people that she feels made a positive impact in the East Winston community. Next, Shelly McMillan, uh, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on North Patterson Avenue near the entrance of Northside Shopping Center, was concerned about food co-ops and food deserts in the community. Next, Hosanna Gorley, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive at Winston-Salem State University, chose to feature women of Winston-Salem, unsung heroes. Next, Terry Coppola, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on New Walker Town Road at Salvation Army, wanted to feature the impact of uh, Ms. Maya Angelou, the late Ms. Maya Angelou, on the impact on her impact on Winston Salem. Next, Carlos Gustavo, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located on Reynolds Park Road near King Plaza Shopping Center, chose to feature tobacco plants uh, in a black and white uh, design. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing that. And that was one of the few black and white designs that was submitted. Uh, for the competition. Next, Philip Summers' design will be on display at the bus shelter located on Watown Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Uh, Philip is a former Winston-Salem Transit Authority bus driver. Next, Owens Daniels' design will be on display at the bus shelter located on Peters Creek Parkway in front of the Goodwill Regional Operations Center. Uh, Mr. Daniels, is very involved in local art in the community and recently did a black and white uh, piece that was uh, featured in a local newspaper showing people uh, responding to uh, or putting out messages regarding COVID-19. Next, Megan Mateshka uh, will have her design on display at the bus shelter located in the Salem Crest Apartments community. Megan is an employee at um, a coffee shop that is operated by people with disabilities. And so we're really excited to have someone uh, from the coffee shop uh, who will be uh, a part of this process as well. Next, Elise Barella and Lauren Fry, uh, whose design is currently underway. Uh, their artwork will look different from this example, but it will be a community collaborative reflecting a combination of ideas from volunteers uh, and residents who live near the shelter uh, located at Country Club Road and Jonestown Road. Next. And finally, Carolina Corona, uh, whose design will be on display at the bus shelter located near the McDonald's restaurant on Winolda Road. Actually, Ms. Corona submitted three different um, designs and this one was selected. Um, this project was very engaging and created a lot of interest from the artistic community. Uh, and we only hope that the restoration of the memory wall will create just as much buzz. Next. The RFP for the restoration of the memory wall of love and peace was posted on July 28th, just a couple of days ago. Originally created in 1999 by Mr. Gregory Warmack, also known as Mr. Imagination, the wall has suffered from exposure to the weather, time, and unfortunately, people who had no respect for public art. Um, the Public Art Commission hopes an artist can restore the wall to its former luster and uh, someone can provide a light cleaning of the structure as well. Information on the RFP can be found 
on the City of Winston-Salem's Facebook page, as well as Wiska's Facebook page. The picture on the left reflects the wall when it was completed, you know, not too long after it was completed, and the picture on the right reflects the wall as it looks today. Next, switching gears a little bit, each year WISTA celebrates our employees with an event uh, that we hold to acknowledge their uh, accomplishments. However, until this year, we never participated in the Transit Drivers Appreciation Day, or TDAD is what we called it. Next, TDAD is a national observance of the hard work of professional public transit operators. Uh, it was enjoyed by WISTA employees who were given a chance to wear a t-shirt or jersey representing their favorite sports team instead of their regular uniform shirt. Uh, next, on March 18th was when we held the event. WISTA provided some refreshments for them to enjoy. Uh, the day was chronicled on our Facebook page and we all look forward to this event again next year. Next. Unfortunately, the, separate, the celebration we typically hold, uh, the Safety and Service Awards program is postponed until we can learn more uh, from the governor regarding the phase three reopening plan. Next, sadly, we have been forced along with other agencies to cancel many of our events or our participation in events. Our 2020 festival has been rescheduled for July 9th, 2021. Next, our participation in the annual Earth Day was scrapped. The Get On Board Day was canceled this year as well. Next, we could not participate in the community day events uh, that we typically attend and there are no plans to host another job fair here at the Transportation Center. Next. So, um, We've been actively marketing information regarding services and or policy changes due to the COVID-19 pandemic, including the switch to level one transportation services, our decision to provide fare free service in an effort to increase the safety level for our employees, and a generic message about staying home to slow the spread of COVID. Next, we also publicly thanked Love Out Loud Winston-Salem the city of Winston-Salem and Haynes Brands for donating masks for our ridership. Uh, these donations were provided prior to the recent executive orders by the governor and mayor Alan Joins regarding mask and face covering requirements while using public transportation. This information is posted at the Transportation Center on our website and on our social media pages. Next. Our social media uh, pages serve as the primary sources we use to inform and motivate our readers and the public. The posts and tweets to our Facebook and Twitter pages sometimes generate comments or questions from our writers to which we do respond if warranted. Next, we also share or retweet posts from the Public Health Department and the City of Winston-Salem we take the liberty of adding route or schedule information uh, to those posts when it is appropriate for us to do so. WISTA also utilizes our interactive voice response system, uh, the IVR system, to communicate messages to our readers. So if someone calls 336-727-2000, next. Okay, it's supposed to be a message there, but it's not. Uh, then they might hear a message about WISTA's writing requirements or news about changes to our service. Uh, we use the next bus system as well to inform passengers who have signed up to receive service alerts from us. Uh, we incorporate many different tools to reach out to our riders. Recently, we produced two videos to encourage riders to be more safety aware and to share service changes during COVID-19. Next. Okay, you have to turn the sound up, I think. Huh? Okay, well, anyway, this was the um, video that Donna uh, produced or participated in to help our passengers know um, what our changes were regarding uh, riding fare free and our two bag policy. 
um, and it was produced prior to the face mask requirement uh, being implemented. It has a more professional tone to it. Uh, the other video had a hip hop flavor to it and was also used to encourage riders to stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. Uh, next, next slide. Next. Okay, so if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Do we know when the, uh, what the period is for the display of the art in oh. the shelters? Yeah, uh, well, right now, uh, some of the uh, materials are being created uh, because they gave the artists an option of installing artwork on site at the shelters or um, creating it, having it printed, enlarged, and installed by the Public Art Commission. Some of the artists chose that option. So uh, as we get into the next couple of months, I think in August and September, uh, by late September, all of the artwork should be up all over uh, the city. Thank you. Sure. Tina, that was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fellow board members, any, any other comments, questions? On either one of those um, um, presentations, in case you didn't get a chance to uh, maybe uh, have a comment or question in regards to the fiscal year um, presentation also. Okay. We'll certainly compliment the staff on everything that they're doing to keep ridership going. Like Mr. F Dr. Flair said, you know, our ridership is still maintaining. We're still, like Ms. Woodson said, we're still helping out everybody during this time. And it's, um, and I'm sure we're having to think outside the box every single day, every single week. So thank you, Ms. Woodson and everyone at, at WISTA. Thank you. I, I think there's a couple of informational items, uh, correct, Ms. Woodson? Yes, and they were basically just put into your packets for your review, just um, the technical advisory committee, they had already approved the, um, from their perspective and council, approved the bus purchases as well as the planning study. So I wanna provide, provided that in your board packet. Um, and then just wanted to highlight the fact that uh, WISTA just participated or were in, um, involved in an audit of our um, inventory as well as our environmental compliance as well as our Medicaid screening process. And I just want to make sure that I let you all know that our staff has done an exceptional job with um, our reports and the audits have been successfully accepted and WISTA stands out for their um, meeting their obligations to the city, the requirements um, in all of those audits. So that's why I wanted to, there's nothing really to go over just for your review and to make you aware of the accomplishments of the staff here. I really appreciate them individually as well as collectively. And I just wanted to share that um, with the board today, but everything else just for your review. Well, just fantastic information uh, today and excited about the new buses and yeah, and the reports really are eye opening. So I'm sure that um, uh, more to come in regard to however the, wherever this pandemic drives us to drive, right? No right. Intended, but um, fellow board members, any further comments or questions? No. Nope. Well, we're being easy on everybody today. No hey, questions. Garcia, I do have a question. Okay. I have two um, logins. I'm not sure who the participants are. Larry B. And then there's a telephone number. I'm just trying to get it correct for um, minutes. Larry is with the city of Winston Salem um, and making sure because he's live streaming our um, board meeting. Okay. I'm not sure about the call in um, participant. Okay. I just wanted to. Get 
And that's all we have for you this afternoon, Mr. Garcia. We okay. thank you for your participation and allowing us to present to you on behalf of Worcester Salem Transit Authority. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Well, if there's no further comments or questions, I'd like I too would like to thank everyone and please, please continue to be safe, uh, take advantage of those resources that are out there, like I mentioned earlier. And thank you, uh, everyone at WISTA, and thank you to, for all of our representatives from the city that are with us today for all the work that we're doing to keep us going. So uh, if there's no further, with no further ado, I'd like to bring this meeting to a conclusion. Thank you, and we will be in touch soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.